Hi everyone, it's Rob Watson, the module leader for Tech 2503 uh, Community Media Production. And ooh, let me just take this off. In this session, um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the topics we're going to cover in the lecture, which is the 16th lecture in our lecture series. And the title this week is Community Representation and Civic Participation. Uh, the notes are, are, are up on the uh, DMU Commons wiki. Uh, the PowerPoint slides I've produced and I don't share them as usual, um, but the notes are available to download as a PDF document if you go to wiki.our.dmu.ac.uk. Um, the focus of this session is to think about um, kind of sense of civic activi uh, activism, this kind of sense of civic participation. The civic realm is the, 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 the more formal structured part of our, social, of our society, which is focused around things like administration and politics and representation and the kind of balance of powers between the commercial and the governmental and the private and the public. Uh, and it occupies a kind of uh, a, a, a strata, if you like, of social engagement, which is can be formalised and formally recognised and is planned for and is uh, informed by the uh, contributions and the debates and the discussions of lots of different types of actors. Primarily, it's based around a strong sense of media, uh, a dis debate and discussion, which goes into forming the uh, uh, what we call the, co the, the public sphere. We've kind of mentioned this in the past. We want to go into it in a little bit more detail in this session. But one of the challenges to, that have been debated at the moment in, in the kind of post-Brexit and the post-Trump age is the idea that our democracy is broken. And somehow the, the, the kind of trust and the kind of um, confidence that we have in civic engagement and civic uh, structures and institutions, democratic institutions, are somehow under pressure and are waning. Uh, and we use various measures to think about how, our, how successful our society is. Um, and often with these measures, we get detached from the sense that there's consequences to these measures, is that the kind of way that we think about our civic engagement and our civic life and our planning and our resources and who is allowed to participate and who's encouraged to participate and who's excluded and marginalised, these this whole debate and discussion seems to kind of be... Uh, uh, up for grabs at the moment, let's put it that way. So some of the examples that we'll look at was we'll look at the way that kind of uh, media activism has been used as a form of uh, counterbalance to corporate global corporate uh, capitalist interests. And we look at things like protest.net and indie media and in the independent media centres and how they've emerged from the kind of uh, counter globalisation movements and the post banking crisis movements. So this is founded on an idea of kind of open publishing and a kind of sense that uh, there's a more democratic way to facilitate debate and discussion within civic society. So this leads to a kind of a, a focus on the idea of community media as a series of social movements or a, a set of social movements which are able to project a pro political identity but also at the same time articulate specific campaigns around uh, advocacy for change on you know specific and select issues um, and this requires the building and the maintaining of an establishing of activist networks in which people come together in order to be able to uh, debate and discuss and um, what's the word I'm looking for to, to um, uh, agitate for uh, certain outcomes which challenge some of the mainstream uh, outcomes that are kind of uh, predicted at, uh, at present. Now, in Germany, Germany has a governmental agency uh, which is uh, commissioned in order to promote civic education, civic participation. Uh, and I wonder if there's lessons that we can learn from that uh, for community media that kind of restructures in that kind of broaden the debate, get people talking, get people engaging, which isn't present here in the UK, but might be something which could be uh, you know, usefully considered. Uh, so it adds to a sense of political democracy. How do we develop uh, and articulate our community's goals, our interests, and what's the kind of debate process, the decisional process uh, that underp underpins the, the, the legislative and resource choices that are allocated and made? made. So the challenge is, is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to wrap everything together in terms of often an idea of the kind of general public. You know, the, the, it's just an amorphous number of people out there. 
But one of the challenges that comes forward in this debate is the idea that there are multiple publics and that public, the idea of being a, a public is an open issue and it isn't something that we can essentialise, it isn't something that we can restrict to just very narrow uh, select categories. And this takes us on to look at some detail about the, uh, the notion of the public sphere. Uh, which is based around the work of Jürgen Habermas, who was instrumental in talking about, uh, uh, he used the uh, 18th century, the emergence of the coffee house in the 18th century, as a kind of model to suggest that it's possible to have a, an ideal uh, space for discussion, argument and conversation. Uh, I'm on the side of the argument that's quite sceptical about there being any possibility of an ideal space, and that we have to look at things more pragmatically and more realistically and based on evidence. But it's a good idea to think about social interaction. So how do we balance uh, the kind of competing issues to do with um, to do with uh, newspapers, corporations, uh, information management, tech companies, governments? You know, there's an awful lot of uh, debate and discussion about how we. Uh, use media to develop a more democratic culture. Uh, so we'll cover these uh, issues and more. Uh, let me just find the uh, the lecture. Oops, there we go. Let's go to the main page. The lecture notes have been posted. Come on, let's work. Uh, sorry, I didn't bring up the page before I checked. Uh, let's just scroll down. Lecture notes. So we're looking at lecture uh, uh, 16 and we're basing this on the Kevin Howley chapter uh, chapter 31 by Anne-Marie Todd which is media activism for global justice uh, I've not put any video any viewing uh, up to watch yet but I will do at some point over the next few days and I'll mention what that is at the lecture uh, so hopefully you can read the notes in advance or I'll see you at the lecture